Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In this video, I'm going to try and give you five tips to help make your next astrophoto hopefully be your best astrophoto yet. So straight away, jumping right into it, coming in at number five is going to be framing. Chances are, if you're just hitting go to and hoping for the best from a target, you're probably not going to be getting the best from your target. There are exceptions to this, of course. Some things just can't be helped with better framing, either be down to the target size itself or the field of view or focal length that you're imaging it at. But in some cases, you may find that just by using a field of view simulating tool like in Stellarium or on Telescopius website, you can actually just move your frame around a little bit and capture other interesting objects in the field of view, which will all really lend to the overall image and elevate it to the next level. Taking the extra minute or two to actually find these targets which may offer better perspective on a shot or overall just a more pleasing composition to the human eye can really be the difference between getting a good shot or a great shot I think and it really is worth that extra just literally just a couple of minutes. Coming in at number four then is going to be focusing. Now if you're a beginner to astrophotography then it can be tempting to just just use what you have your focus knob and your eyeball Mark II eyeball and hope for the best and you know while you can sometimes nail focus the chances that you're repeatably absolutely nailing it time after time are honestly low. That's where focus aids like Bionov masks and electronic focusers come into the equation. Now if you're still manually focusing and that's fine I did that for an awful long time and it did work fine just make sure that you're using a Bionov mask. Now you can buy these online you can make them in some cases if you have a 3D printer capable of printing the right size for your telescope but however you go about doing it whether you buy one or make one definitely look at getting a Bionov mask because it makes focusing a truly easy task and it's completely repeatable in all situations. Now if you can fit it into your budget then I would always recommend going out and purchasing an electronic automatic focus or something like ZWO's EAF is a perfect example of a well designed product. Its only drawback though is that if you don't have the hand controller for it then you are going to be limited to some computer based, software based focusing routines then uh, as it doesn't have a removable clutch like certain focusers do but it's a good product at a good price and I use a bunch of them throughout my different setups and honestly once you've gotten an automatic focuser and gotten used to the ease of use and repeatability there's no going back, uh, I won't lie. Now you can and you should use your software to your advantage for focusing and make sure that it's, well, A, dialed in first of all and make sure that it's absolutely nailing focus repeatably by adjusting your parameters until it's given you a repeatable V-curve that the software can use to determine the best focus point. But also B, make sure that you're telling it to refocus regularly throughout the night either be it time based or temperature based refocuses however you're doing it just make sure that you're staying on top of it and devoting those extra few minutes out of your session to focusing so coming in at number three now is going to be setting the correct exposure time for your setup now this is one of the things that's going to vary massively between any two people using different rigs so your focal length that you're using the focal ratio of your telescope, whether you're using filters or not, the brightness of your sky, the camera that you're using, the gain that you're using. There's so many factors that come into this into determining the correct exposure length that it can feel like a minefield, but luckily it's not all doom and gloom because let's face it, if you're like most of us these days, be it using DSLR or a modern CMOS sensor, Either way, you're going to have a pretty easy time finding a fairly optimal exposure. The extremely low read noise in modern CMOS sensors, be they on a dedicated astro cam or like I said in certain newer DSLRs, has made it far easier than ever to actually reach a usable high stacking efficiency exposure length. Now, it used to be the case that really you had to focus on getting the longest exposures possible. So you really had to nail your auto guiding, make sure your mount and telescope were operating to peak efficiency so you could, you know, repeatedly get those five minute, 10 minute exposures or whatever they were time after time as that was really the key to getting the best pictures possible. And it kind of still is, but like I said, thankfully due to these low read noise CMOS sensors, now you can actually get really close to let's say five minutes sub exposure 
quality by taking five one minute exposures, which just about anybody's rig can do, be it guided or not. So that's the most important thing to determine. If you can indeed take five minute shots time after time after time, 100% repeatability with an extremely high keep rate, something like 95% of the subs you get you keep, for example, then by all means, shoot away with those five minute subs. But if you're losing, say two out of five, because you know, you've got a wobbly bound legs or whatever the reasoning, don't feel bad at all about shortening those exposures up down to 60 seconds or in some cases, even less. I promise that the results that you can get from short exposures these days are pretty mind boggling. So coming in now at number two is a really big one and this is overall integration time. So in the spirit of the video, let's say if you're trying to make your next shot your best shot, then you should also try to make your next shot your longest shot. And what I mean by that is let's say if you've never gone above a 10 hour project before, then make this next project the one that you do that. It really is worth it. Going all the way up to 20 hours and beyond is something that you'll see appearing in common over and over again on the best astro images that you see online. Um, aside from, you know, creatively framed ones and things like that, or, or lucky captures of uh, transient objects. If you want to take a beautiful deep image, then there really is no gain around it. You need to take a beautiful deep exposure overall. So however you segment it up using the tips we talked about in the last segment about, you know, exposure lengths, the main factor that you need to be focusing on is getting those hours underneath your belt. That's going to be the thing that really, really makes the difference when it comes to the next step, which is going to be coming in at number one, processing. Now processing, it really does deserve that top spot because it's where the magic happens. It truly does. These days processing is, is way more than 50% of the entire equation, I would say. So invariably this leads us to the problem of premium software um for ages and ages i put it off okay i wanted to use free software and stick to using free software because i felt kind of bad spending all that money on a piece of software right uh, like pix insight and astro pixel processor i wish i hadn't though i wish i had just bit the bullet and maybe delayed a filter purchase or a telescope purchase or whatever my next purchase was that was going to take you know a chunk of money out of my bank account and instead spend it on those programs earlier than i did because there's just no way that you're going to get the same amount of bang for buck out of any piece of equipment than you do from those processing programs now that's not to say that you know you can't get wonderful results out of things like Cyril these days because it, you know it's, it's great and it's it's free and I'm, you know, two thumbs up to those guys. They're making wonderful software and it's accessible to all. That's always a good thing, right? But if you're really looking at taking your images to the absolute ragged edge that they're capable of, then you are going to need to buy PixInsight, that kind of thing. Uh, there's no two ways about it. And you also need the tools to go with it. The plugins such as the Blur Exterminator, Star Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, all these things. Yes, they cost money, but again, you're never going to get the same image quality boost by pe buying a piece of hardware uh, as you will out of investing that same money into the software. And uh, I'd be lying if I said any different to you, I really would. That's where the magic happens. Take, for example, if you used all these tips that we've just been talking about and you take a, a beautiful 50 hours deep new moon ball one crisp sharp data set okay this thing could be processed into an a pod let's say but you try and process it using <laughs> canon photo raw or something like that you're just never going to realize this data's potential uh and that's a shame because it takes a lot of effort to capture that amount of data so uh, why not get the absolute best out of it at least that's my view on it and um you know as someone who's bought all this software what can I say? Uh, once you've bought it, you pretty soon forget about the cost of it, or at least I did. Uh, and now I can just enjoy it, knowing that I actually own these programs for life. And um, I can learn with them for life as well, because <laughs> every single time I log on to Pixie site still these days, I'm learning something new. And that also plays into the whole idea of making your next image your best image, because you're forever picking up new tips that you can apply to all future images. Well guys, I hope that you've found at least some use out of that. Many people, I'm going to be teaching my uh, my granny how to suck eggs, as the, as the saying goes. You're well versed in all this stuff. 
but hopefully to a few beginners out there this might be useful or it might prompt you to make a few changes to your next planned imaging session and hopefully good luck in getting that next shot being your best shot so uh with that said guys that's about it from me thank you ever so much for watching hopefully we'll start getting some clear skies soon so normal service can resume but until then just look after yourselves huge thanks to everybody for your support it truly means the world to me and uh, i love you all i'll see you soon clear skies <laughs>